Hello everyone, welcome to Rushchem summary videos. In this video, I'm summarizing the lesson electrolysis. Electrolysis is a technique that uses current to cause a non-spontaneous redox reaction. These are the important points to remember about electrolysis. The reaction happening in electrolysis is non-spontaneous because the reaction cannot happen naturally. So you need to give uh, electricity or, you need, or else you need to have a power supply for this reaction to occur. So like in galvanic cells, in electrolysis also, the oxidation happens at the anode, but anode is positive now. In galvanic cells, the anode is negative, and in electrolysis, anode is positive. So reduction happens at the cathode, but cathode is negative. In galvanic cells, cathode is positive. In electrolysis, cathode is negative. But in both cells, oxidation is anode and reduction is cathode. In electrolysis, it is electrical energy going to chemical energy because we are using a power supply to make a chemical reaction happen, to make a non, we say a non-spontaneous reaction happens. Therefore, we say electrical energy is going to chemical energy. Electrons are flowing from anode to cathode. So like in galvanic cells here also, the electrons are flowing from anode to cathode, but it is now positive to negative terminal. Okay, now, we, now we will see how to predict the products of electrolysis. So first I have taken molten compound. So yes, the example I took electrolysis of molten sodium chloride or a sodium chloride liquid using carbon electrodes. So carbon electrodes are inert, which means they don't participate in the reaction. So the first thing to do is, so take look at the given compound, it's NaCl. So if it is an ionic compound, so we use ionic salts here. So you should know that ionic compounds exist as ions. So you break them into ions. So it is then Na plus and Cl minus. So NaCl will exist in molten state or liquid state, NaCl will exist as Na plus and Cl minus. The second step is you group them as oxidants and reductants. For that, you can use your electrochemical series in your data book. So Na plus is an oxidant. You find that on the left-hand side of the electrochemical series, therefore it is an oxidant. And the Cl minus, it is on the right-hand side, therefore it is a reductant. So we know that the oxidants are undergoing reduction and reductants are undergoing oxidation. So now you can write the reaction. So anode is what? Oxidation. So what is undergoing oxidation? The Cl minus. So now from the electrochemical series, you write the reaction. So it, it is the reaction going the backward direction because oxidation reaction is from right to left. So it's Cl minus is going to Cl2 plus 2E. So cathode is reduction. So what's undergoing reduction? It is Na plus. So now write the reaction by looking at the electrochemical series. So it is Na plus plus E, Na. So after adding those two half equations, you can get the overall reaction. And you should know that this overall reaction here is non-spontaneous. Okay, now we will look at the electrolysis of aqueous compounds, which means we have now water um, with these compounds. So this uh, compound is now dissolved in water. So I have taken as the example dilute sodium chloride solution. So when you make your list, you have Na plus. So when you have an ionic compound dissolved in water, again you got ions. So it is Na plus Cl minus, but not only these two, you also got water now. Okay, now group them as oxidants and reductants. So for that, you can uh, use the electrochemical series. So we know that sodium is, it is an oxidant and we know Cl minus is a reductant. Water, so water you will find on both sides, both on left and the right side. So therefore it can behave as an oxidant and also as a reductant. So if you check in your electrochemical series, if you go through the right left hand side, you will find the reaction of water at negative 0.83. So 0.83, the negative 0.83. So this is the reaction of, this is the reduction of water. water. You will find this reaction at negative 0.83. Now, now find the uh, place of this water when compared with sodium plus. 
So we'll see that this reaction is above Na plus. Okay, so play, write it correctly. Write it in the correct place. Okay, now take the water from the right hand side. So go through the electrochemical series. Now check the right hand side and find the reaction of water. So you will see that the reaction of water you can find at 1.23, 1.23 volts. So when you compare that with Cl minus, it is below the Cl minus reaction. So write it in the correct place below Cl minus. Okay, now in this case, I have two reductants and two oxidants. So I have two reductants and two oxidants. What are the two oxidants? Water and Na plus. So from oxidants, the strongest one is the top one. So we learned that from oxidants, the strong, strongest one is the top one. Therefore, you circle the top reaction from the left side. And when you have two reductants, the bottom one is the strongest reductant. So therefore, you circle the bottom one from the right hand side. So now you can write your anode and the cathode reaction. So anode is the oxidation. So oxidation is from the right hand side because it's from the reductants. Now for the reductants, I circle the water. So now write the oxidation of water reaction, which is from right to left. It's H2O is going to O2, 4H plus and 4E. So you can find this reaction in your data book. And from the oxidant side, you circle the water again. So therefore the cathode reaction, so at cathode also water is reducing. So it's then water plus 2E, H2 and 2OH minus. And to get the overall reaction, you add these two reactions together and you will get the overall reaction then. Okay, now we will see how to use Faraday's equations to do electrolysis calculation. So we have uh, two equations, one is Q equals to IT, other one is Q equals to moles of electrons times Faraday. So here Q in these two equations, Q is the electrical charge passed through the cell, I is the current in amps, and T is the time in seconds. The units are very important. So you have to remember that Q is the charge, which is measured in coulombs, I is the current in amps and time is should be in seconds. And the second equation, Q equals to moles of electrons. This is Ne here, means moles of electrons. This is the moles of electrons passed through the cell times by Faraday. So this is a constant. So Faraday is the electrical ch so charge on one mole of electrons, so which has a, it is a constant. The value is 96,000. 96,500. So you can find this value in your data book. Okay, we will look at one example now. Metallic key to be plated with copper metal was placed in a copper sulfate solution and current of 0.2 amps was passed through the cell for 30 minutes. What is the mass of copper metal deposited on the key? You can find this question in my study guide. Okay, so first I use Q equals to IT. So Q equals to I is the current, so it's 0.2 amps. And time has to be in seconds. That's why it's 30 minutes. That's why I times by 60 to make it seconds. So I got now 360 coulombs. So then I can use the second equation, which is Q equals to moles of electrons times Faraday. So now I can find the moles of electrons. So moles of electrons equals to Q divided by Faraday. So I found Q from here and Faraday is a constant. So I got the moles of electrons. So this is the moles of electrons went through the copper sulfate solution. So it's talking about copper. So it's asking how much of copper metal deposited. So therefore I should write a reaction to show the deposition of copper. So you started with copper sulfate, the copper sulfate is CuSO4, which, which has Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Therefore, it is Cu2 plus plus 2E is making copper. So deposition of a metal is the reduction. Okay, now I know how many moles of electrons are there. So you can find the moles of copper. So what is the ratio here? So you got two electrons to one copper. So copper is therefore half of the electron. That's why the moles of electrons are, moles, moles of copper is moles of electrons divided by two. So because the moles of copper is 
half of the electron. So you got the moles of copper. Then finally, I can find the mass of copper. Mass equals to moles times the molar mass of copper. So I got then 0 0.118 grams. So this is how you find the mass of a metal deposited from electrolysis. So this is also called electroplating. I hope you enjoyed my video. You can do questions uh, from my study guide. So there you can find the questions and the summary notes on pages uh, 51 to 61. So you can visit my website www.rushchem.com for further information. Thanks for watching my video and I will meet you in the next video. See you then.